Penn State Outreach touches one out of every two households in Pennsylvania. A really important part of, of outreach is extension. Extension to me is really one of the front doors to Penn State. You have trusted extension educators within a community where they vote, where they go to church, where they participate in a community, yet they're connected to this incredible global university. Cooperative Extension is a trusted agent of information, and that's because we tie our educational programs back to the research that underlies the topic. With our Cooperative Extension educators in all 67 of Pennsylvania's counties are able to deliver that knowledge, that science-based information, to the people who have the problems and questions. Marcella Shale has natural gas. It's bound up in rock deep under Pennsylvania that uh, with the extraction of it has the potential of generating significant amounts of dollars for Pennsylvania, but it also has very clear environmental implications. And it's a very large issue uh, that fundamentally could transform Pennsylvania. About two thirds of the state is actually covered by Marcellus. So companies are interested in leasing and have been interested in leasing a very large area. So a lot of landowners are affected by that. It's an issue that uh, is dividing some people. There's a chance to, uh, to earn a lot of money on the one side, but the other people are interested in making sure that the richness of the area that they live in, you know, the beauty, the clean water, they want to make sure that that all gets taken care of. What we've tried to do in Cooperative Extension is to present a lot of the facts and, and uh, show them some of the details that are important as they consider some of the aspects of leasing. Cooperative Extension taught workshops throughout all the Commonwealth. That's critically important to those who are seeking that information and haven't made their decision about a lease or waiting to have something happen in their given community. Now they can make it from a, a position of strength and an informed position. We own 50 acres of forest. In 1979, I signed a lease for a dollar an acre. After signing for three years, I got a total of $219. I had forgotten about it until I started going to the extension meetings. I went to that first meeting and we came out of that meeting knowing how one goes about leasing the land and what you need to do to protect your land. After the educational process from Penn State, we've been able to generate about an extra uh, $200 million in the difference between what their first offers were and what the final outcome was with the uh, leases. Penn State brings the expertise to the community in, in many different ways, and, and I think you need people out in the field really talking to people face-to-face you know, -face so you can get the right information to the people that are wanting this information and, and don't know where to go. The value of education in this process is absolutely huge. So Penn State has a lot to offer to develop more of that resource and keep more of those energy dollars, uh, number one, here in the United States and more importantly here in Pennsylvania. I've grown up on a dairy farm my whole life. I'm the fifth generation here on the farm. My parents tried to you know, tell me to go do something else because it's not the most profitable business to be in. Dairy farming is a very, very tough way to earn a living. And to earn a living in dairy these days, you either have to grow big or you have to have a specialized product. And Adam uh, has a specialized product now. Started out with the idea, I'm gonna make cheese. Didn't know anything about making cheese, never saw anybody making cheese, but you're like, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna make cheese. That's how we're gonna, you know, be profitable. So I just started digging around and talking to people, and that's how I got in connection with Penn State Extension. He just called today, I've been taking like seven cases a week down, it'll be like 21 now. And we drove around the state and looked at some different other operations that were similar to uh, what I was thinking of doing, try to get ideas on how to build a plant, how to lay a plant out, what kind of equipment to use, how to meet Pennsylvania's standards. Adam did approach us and came with this idea, and I sat down and went over his financials to see if we could help him at that point. 
Adam put a very good business plan together. It was designed to show startup costs and startup expenses, and then a three-month projection as far as how much money he was planning to bring in. He also did his research to find out where his market would be, how he would be selling the cheese, and that was a very big part of the loan approval process. Penn State Cooperative Extension was instrumental in helping him get that together. Working with Cooperative Extension is the most helpful for networking. Through contact with Extension, they can hook you up with somebody, whether it's a product that I need to buy for an ingredient, or if it's you know another cheese maker, another raw milk dairy. It's relationships and connections that you have to use to further yourself in any business. He's a role model to a whole generation of future farmers and just family farms all over this region. He's really sort of broken the mold that we think of as a traditional family farm in Western Pennsylvania. And he makes a great product. And that product is now starting to get attention from not just this community, but communities in Pittsburgh and Cleveland and Youngstown. And, uh, and that's a great thing for, for farming in Lawrence County. Everyone has a vested interest in food safety in Pennsylvania, whether it's the consumers uh, that can be at risk or whether it's the farmers that uh, want to supply a wholesome, nutritious, safe food product for the consumers. Hoover's Produce is a place where a lot of people from town who farm bring their produce here and we wash, package it, and distribute it. Safe agricultural practices are very important at Hoover's Produce. We take steps to make sure that we're doing everything we can to keep the food as safe as we can while it's here and before it's shipped. That way consumers have a better chance of having safe food to eat. One of the programs that we have uh, here in Pennsylvania in working with Penn State Cooperative Extension and USDA is what's known as GIP and GAP. YIP being the uh, good handling practices and GAP being good agriculture practices. These two programs are very helpful in terms of putting out good information to both farmers and packagers and handlers of food products to ensure that food safety uh, is improved here in Pennsylvania from the farm right to the consumer's dinner plate. The information that we've gotten through the GAP program and the guidelines that we've been given make sure that we are doing what we need to do to keep everything safe. If the Cooperative Extension wasn't here, family farms like ours would be definitely struggling to maintain the quality that we need to. And without the Cooperative Extension, I don't think we'd even know where to start. In Pennsylvania, we all have a common goal. We want to make sure that we have the best quality and safest food supply of any place in the world. I think we're on that path. We are educating the consumers. Uh, the things that they can do and incorporate into everyday life to ensure that uh, food safety and nutrition is a priority and everyone benefits from that. He's deployed to Iraq and we have four children, one who was born while he was away. It's hard. This is our second big deployment as a family. They feel upset and sad and lonely and scared. It's hard for families who live in regular communities to deal with deployment because they are usually the only ones in the neighborhood or you know in this classroom or in the school who have a father who's deployed. We don't have these big Fort Bragg's sitting in Pennsylvania where the families can go and get this support. So it is incredibly important to network military kids with other military kids so that they can get that support and understanding. Operation Military Kids is perfect for the National Guard child because they have the ability to bring the kids together and let them know that they aren't alone and that there are other children out there struggling with the same things that they're struggling with. They've all received the hero packs. They have the little hero packs, which my younger children have gotten, and then the big sling packs for the older kids. And of course, the Operation Military Camp, which they really look forward to. <laughs> it's nice to keep their minds busy and keep them active so that they don't think about their dad being gone. 
The military is an expensive thing. Not only do you have the soldier and the equipment, but you've got the families to take care of. So to have organizations like the 4-H military grant uh, that we receive here from Penn State University and Operation Military Kids it is vital to be able to run the things that we run. They go, it's camp and it's okay. Yeah, they go, it's okay because I'm not alone and now they have someone they can talk to. It gives them something that I can't. It provides them with acquaintances and friends that are going through the exact same thing. It just helps them to realize that they're not alone. Pennsylvania is one of two states left who have no water well construction or location standards. Over 50% of the population in rural counties can be on a private water system, and private water systems are not required to be tested. That means that homeowners are on their own, and if you're going to have a water well drill, it's really important that the homeowner be educated. Being somewhat new to a well, I was interested in getting involved in the master well owner network so that I would have a better idea of how our well worked and what could damage our well because I was concerned about our water situation. The Master Well Owner Network was a project that we started up in north central Pennsylvania to train volunteers who own private water wells how to manage those systems and maintain those systems. And then their job was to go back and spread that message uh, to as many people as they could. In the north central area, we gathered 39 water samples. Well, when those samples came back, it, close to 50% of them had coliform bacteria. So there's an opportunity for a health risk there. And so we shared that information with Bruce Burdick. The Extension Service sent me the water analysis report from the master well program, and I was very concerned about it. And so I talked to him more in depth about that, and he said, well, it would really be nice if we could have a lot more samples around the county to verify what it is we just found. And so Bruce found county funds to test 200 more private water wells in the county of, of McKean. The data was so astounding to me uh, that I felt there was a public health issue. I mean, when we had 200 samples and 60% uh, of them uh, tested positive for total coliform, I mean, that in itself is an issue. It's important that people understand that their water is susceptible to disease and contaminants and that it needs to be tested regularly. I think Extension Service has uh, done a marvelous job at, at an awareness program about clean water and its impact on citizens. One thing that I really liked about the water testing through uh, the Extension Office was that when we got our results back, not only did we get our results, but it also included recommendations you could use to fix your problem. People tend to take those things for granted because you turn the tap on, you have water, and you go about your business until you have a problem. And so it's important that we protect this water, take care of this water. Our major goal with the Camelina Project is to develop new economic activity in agriculture in western Pennsylvania. We've been working on the project uh, about three years now, and this holds a lot of promise for our future. Camelina is an oilseed crop similar to canola. It's a really interesting crop agronomically, and it adapts to the climate. It's quick to germinate. It really can tolerate some cold weather, some frost, uh, and even freezing and survive. The seed can be crushed and used for both oil and the meal from the seed can be used for animal feed. One of the reasons that I became interested in Camelina is the uh, connection with the Erie biofuels, being willing to blend the Camelina oil with their normal production and uh, therefore we'd have a local market for this. Camelina is a crop that has showed potential for about the last two years as being biodiesel production capable and does not compete for human consumption. The whole food versus fuel argument really pushed us to find something that does not compete in the human food chain. Along with Lake Erie Biofuels, the Crawford County uh, Commissioner stepped forward 
and said, we'd like to enter into an agreement with Penn State University for approximately 100 acres of county farm ground for experimenting with the camelina and other oilseed crops. We had the county farm that we thought would be available for use on some of the research for this crop, and we thought that this would be a good use of that farm for the citizens of Northwest Pennsylvania and beyond. Camelina meal has a high level of omega-3, which is really desired in the human diet. So we brought on poultry signs here at Penn State University, and they have been feeding camelina meal to broilers and layers, seeing if the omega-3 carries through into the eggs and the meat of chickens. It does, and uh, we're in the approval process now to see if camelina meal can be a value-added feed for the poultry industry here in Pennsylvania. Farmers are always looking for the next good thing, and I think this is a good thing all the way around. It's new, it's experimental, but it's really got a lot of promise, probably as much promise as anything I've seen in my career. Outreach and extension and engagement is so critical to the state, but also to the university to help address the challenges we're facing in the Commonwealth and beyond. We've built relationships in the communities that really help us to understand what the local needs are. So when we look to the future, what we see is a cooperative extension educational system that draws on the strengths of the entire university. 